Hello and welcome to the video tutorial for week 8 in the iRacing and Chrome pre-series with the McLaren MP430. This week the series visits the circuit Gilles Villeneuve, also known as Montreal, one of the relatively slow circuits, at least in terms of cornering speed, in this series. It has a long straight though, so it also shows a little bit in the setup, especially in the race setup, since high downforce is just too slow on the straightaway. You will need to run either medium downforce or maybe in case you maybe have underachieved in qualifying or at least you feel like you've underachieved or you just need to overtake people. Um, you can also run low downforce. It's maybe not as quick as medium in terms of overall pace and especially in terms of drivability, but it is a very close second uh, in terms of just raw pace and it allows you to overtake relatively easily if the guy in front of you is not on low downforce as well. The qualifying setup, however, is still high downforce. Reason for it is just the speed difference between low downforce with a DRS flap open and high downforce with a DRS flap open is fairly small. And on both of the sort of reasonably long straights, the soft finish straight and the one leading towards the last chicane, uh, you have DRS in qualifying available and the speed difference will be relatively slow. So that explains it. As in other virtual racing school video tutorials, the lap that is about to be analyzed was done in default weather and the time of day used in the Grand Prix series. In this week, this is just normal afternoon. First of all, I'll play the lap and afterwards go through it and point out the important bits. So this was a hot lap around the circuit Jill Wilnov with the McLaren MP430. Let's go back to the start of the tape and end the last lap. So in the beginning, you want to be in fixed 09 for basically the complete outlap and uh, only switch back to fixed 01 on the approach to the last chicane. Fixed 01 in this case is fine. Uh, you won't run out or you might run out like 20 meters or so before the start finish line, which is a distance that doesn't really matter in terms of lap time. So fixed 01 is a safe thing, just like in Coda, no need to mess around with fixed 02 and then push to pass occasionally or anything. Now for the approach for the hot lap, you want to be hitting the inside curb on entry really hard and then avoid the curb on the second part of the chicane in order to get the most traction and the most speed on the straightaway. As you can see, I'm hitting the inside sausage curb quite heavily, but I try to avoid the second sausage curb. And the painted curb, the red and white painted thing, that is fine. That doesn't really cost you any traction, but the sausage curb shouldn't be hit. Then let's check the exit. Uh, you want to be as close to the wall as possible and take as much speed out of, of the corner. And then you also want to pay attention to the DRS LEDs. You, uh, there's no DRS marker or anything available, so um, probably the the best marker is actually the end of the curb. Right after the end of the curb, it switches to two LEDs lit, which means you can open it now, and you should do so as uh, as early as you can. It might be a little bit tricky since you might still be busy with uh, you know managing traction and getting the power down. 
the already need to switch on the DRS, but it is really quite important to switch it on as early as possible in order to get the highest straight line speed as possible. The next thing you might want to do is move the car over to the left hand side. This gives you a little bit of extra distance to accelerate the car and get to high speeds. And also it makes the kink that is basically leading towards turn one, which is shown with the mouse right now. Uh, it makes it a little bit of a wider radius corner. And this could be important since you have the DRS flap open and the car might oversteer on you if you do any harsh inputs on the steering wheel while driving with the open flap. So that's the reason for moving the car over. You don't do that at the end of the lap, by the way. But we'll get to that later on. So for the preparation for the first corner, move the car over all the way to the right hand side in that kink and then use this access road here uh, as your brake marker. Right around there you want to brake really hard and go down to third gear uh, on the on the run to towards turn one. But what you need to pay attention to is that you open up the brake or release the brake a little bit as soon as you start turning in. It is quite important if you don't do that uh, soon enough you will lock up the left front wheel and you will probably miss the apex in the corner. Speaking of the apex, you want to hit that curb uh, as much as you can without actually stepping towards the left of the curb. There's this painted area. Uh, this is something you don't want to hit. This will, If you go over that, it, the car will start bouncing a little bit. But the actual painted curb, that is fine. You should hit that. Let's quickly check the chase view of that. There was still about a tire width or so of space, so you could cut it a little bit more, but th this should do. It, it, it's fine as it is. On corner exit for turn one, don't track out all the way. You should be tracking out to roughly, let's say, 75% or so of the width, so that the entry for the second corner, the kind of 180 degree corner, isn't compromised too much. Let's quickly check that in the chopper view. This looks about right there's still some space towards the right hand side so this is okay and for the second corner you want to hug the inside curb as much as possible but don't drive on it the shape of the curb will sort of throw you off if you drive on it in the middle of the corner and it will generally be a little bit slower but getting all the way close to it and maybe even stepping on the white line is totally fine uh, that should be the the best way around the corner on corner exit it's kind of interesting since, at least for me personally, tracking out all the way towards the outside has proven to be a little bit slower than staying close on exit, cl close to the to the apex or close to the inside, and then just uh, driving towards the middle of the road. I'm not sure whether this is maybe a setup dependent thing. It, it could potentially be. Feel free to experiment with it, but I would recommend, at least with the setup that is provided, to not track out all the way to the outside. Then for the preparation for the uh, turn three, you want to be all the way on the left hand side, as close to the grass as possible, and break at the 200 meter marker. I think it means 200 meter. There's a board on the wall that says two, that's where you need to start to start breaking. And then s similar to turn one, you want to cut the curb as much as possible without hitting that painted stuff beyond the curb. So drive right to that edge if possible, and then uh, try to end up in the middle of the road roughly when you need to transition towards uh, the second part of the chicane where you need to turn left. Right around the middle of the road you should be transitioning towards uh, turning left. That, that worked out quite well here. And then hit that curb fairly heavily as well. You should be getting really close to the edge of the grass actually with the tires. So you basically need to cut it as much as you possibly can without getting onto the grass. And then Try to use as much space as possible on exit, but don't hit the wall. As you can see with the, all that rubber there, uh, apparently this is kind of common to maybe scrub the wall there a little bit. Try to avoid it. It, it will break the suspension uh, relatively easily, so don't do it ever. But at the same time, you need to maximize this, the space just in order to widen up the radius and take more speed through the corner. So it's always a little bit of a trade-off between uh, lap time and risk of maybe not finishing a lap if it's in qualifying or not finishing the race at all if you if you do that in, in the race trim. 
for the run to the second chicane, uh, you go all the way to the left here. Uh, maybe even run that curb. Uh, it opens up the radius a little bit for the next corner, the fast right-hander. Pretty much the only fast corner around the circuit. But you can also stay away from it. It will not really cost a whole lot of time. But since it's not really upsetting the car, you can just yeah go over it. And then stay close to the wall uh, in the actual corner. For the run towards the next uh, chicane, the second one, uh, it's kind of difficult to find a decent braking marker since there's no boards or anything. What I used as a brake marker in this case is that orange cap or orange end of the guardrail, which you can see now, which is right behind or right... Mm, let's go back a little bit. Uh, we'll click forward maybe. This orange cap, if that is... Uh, if you have passed this with your mirror in, in cockpit view, then it's about time to start braking. So start braking here really heavily. You can also use the space on the right hand side beyond the white line a little bit. I haven't used it here but you can do so if you want to. And go down all the way to third gear. On apex it's again the basically the edge of the curb on the inside but not uh, the painted stuff beyond that. There seems to be some sort of stone thing uh, behind it. Don't hit that. The car will bounce too much. And for the second part get as close to the curb as possible, but don't drive on it. You need as much traction and as much capability to accelerate as possible. And yeah, on basically the run onto the straightaway, get relatively close to the wall. The more you track out, the more you open up the steering, the more speed you can get down. But again, pay attention to the wall. Uh, it can happen relatively easily that you get a little bit of oversteer. And if you need to correct at this point, you need a little bit of safety margin on exit. Uh, if you're very sure of what you're doing, you can get all the way close, but uh, I'd recommend keeping a little bit of safety margin in case you get oversteer need to correct so that you don't necessarily instantaneously hit the wall. On the following straight, which is not exactly completely straight, but also not really a corner, uh, you need to straight line it as much as possible. So I recommend to drive over to the right hand side here, not all the way, just about 80% or so, and then aim for the left-hand side again under braking. Uh, in terms of braking, um, there's very little reference around the actual brake point. Uh, so I would recommend just aiming for something between the 300 and 200 meter board. Uh, around 250 or so is fine. There you need to brake really hard again. Uh, it's a third gear corner on entry. So uh, yeah, go all the way down. Uh, maybe Uh, one thing to really pay attention to is the edge of the grass here. Uh, since under the bridge there's a little bit of tarmac, you sort of get drawn towards that. Uh, I think psychologically, at least. Um, I always have issues when I start uh, practicing for this track that I drive too far to the left-hand side and then end up on the on the grass under braking. And if that happens, you are bound to be in the gravel trap or on the grass in the middle of the corner. So really pay attention to avoid it. And in terms of apex, you want to hit the first curb as much as you possibly can. And you shouldn't try to hit the solid curb, just the painted thing, that's about right. And on the second uh, part of the chicane, that's even more important to not hit the sausage curb. The more settled the car is, the easier it is to get the power down, and that's the important factor here. In that case, it didn't really work out that well. I was bouncing off a little bit, and that caused uh, a little bit of a, yeah motion in the car, the car wasn't really completely settled, and when I went on the throttle, I had oversteer. As you can see, I had to correct that. It didn't cost a lot of time, but still, it wasn't ideal. Could have done... It could have been a little bit better, so... Even there, there's uh, a good bit of room for improvement. Then, for the run towards the uh, hairpin, you want to be braking at the end of the uh, at around the 300 meter board or that little piece of tarmac that is between the grass. That's where you need to start braking, and you want to go down all the way down all the way to second gear. And it's important to really brake in a very straight line here. Don't do anything with the steering or as little as you possibly can. And 
really try to not overshoot the corner or have any lockups or especially real lockups which cause oversteer which will make you miss the corner and then aim for the curb you can drive on the curb it's it's fine at this speed and then don't track out towards the wall you need to stay somewhat in the middle of the road because there's this little um piece of grass that's coming out from the wall uh which would require you to turn right again on on corner exit so try to avoid that and just uh, keep the car a little bit more t towards the middle of the road anyway on on corner exit and then straighten it up as early as you can and accelerate as hard as you possibly can it's really important here to run to the longest straight on on the whole circuit and then get close to this curb and then just prepare for the drs to open up it's right after this bridge here where the drs comes open check this here one led and now two leds and as soon as the two leds are visible you need to switch on the drs uh the earlier the better so yeah pay attention to this and as you can see there's other than this bridge very little reference there's no drs board like on other tracks so this is basically the the only usable reference here so run for the uh, approach for the last chicane uh, one of the most difficult and most important braking zones at, at this circuit uh, i guess your best bet is braking right around the 300 meter board on the left hand side that's where you need to start braking you need to brake extremely hard and you need to pay attention again uh, at least i have the issue that i sometimes run on the grass on the left hand side try to avoid that get as close as possible though towards the grass as you can see here i'm already on that white line a little bit and then yeah third gear is the ideal gear for for that particular corner and similar to what you do on the on your outlap you want to hit the curb really hard on the entry but now also in the basically on exit hit it completely and try to carry as much speed through it get close to the wall without hitting it of course and then prepare for the drs again open it up as early as possible and then as mentioned earlier don't move over to the left hand side again just stay on the right side just in order to save a couple meters it's not really a whole lot of distance that you need to cover additionally if you move over to the left but you know it, it costs a little bit of time even if it's only a couple one thousands it's already a problem and as you have seen the energy runs out uh, with a hundred percent just before the start finish line so even that is no big deal let's take a look from the chase view briefly as you can see uh, i'm hitting the sausage curb really heavily i'm basically completely on it with the middle of the car and then also on the left hand side you also run onto the sausage curb with the left hand tires the car is bottoming out a little bit sparks coming out but it should be fine and then get really close to the wall here you're probably already on that uh, painted tarmac switch on drs as you can see now and then off you go then the lap is pretty much finished you only need to drive straight from there so this was uh the analysis for the lab at Circuit Jill Villeneuve. You can find the telemetry of the lab, the replay, and as mentioned before, both qualifying and race setups over at virtualracingschool.com, where you can also book one to one tuition with myself and other top drivers. Good luck this week and don't hesitate to post questions or feedback below. Thanks for watching.